Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Heritage. How you doing? My name's Michael. This is Pastor Suzanne over here. Say hi, Suzanne. Good morning. Y'all caught me jamming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things that we're trying to do now as a church is we're trying to uh, record the people that come, the people that are here. It's hard online sometimes because sometimes you just don't show up in the feed. So if you could text the word guest, if this is your first time, to 256-291-4996. Just save it in your phone as Heritage Church text. It'd be great. If you've been on this over and over and over again, just text hello to that same number. If you text as a guest, what's going to happen is you're going to get a link to the newsletter of stuff that's happening at Heritage Church right now. We'd love you to start integrating with the church and becoming a part of what we're doing. During this service, we're going to ask questions in the Facebook Live. It's live for a reason. So answer the questions if you'd like. We'd love to share with uh, this on Facebook. Check out our website. If you want to show up in person, it's 9 and 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. And, of course, we'll still stream at 11. So we want to remind you of a few things going on in the life of Heritage Church. We have a blood drive coming up on the 5th of June. That's a great way to serve the community. So yes. sign up for that. And also, we've been in the midst of a pandemic, and it's time for us to kind of venture out. I know a lot of us have social anxiety. <laughs> Uh, right now, so um, but so we're having some events, just yeah. some kind of times for us to gather together in the summer. On June 9th, we're having a trivia night here, and then each and every month at Heritage, we do one thing uh, to reach out to our community and uh, gather some materials for them, something that a nonprofit might need. And this month, we're doing, you know, how when you go to the grocery store and they have those popsicles, they're like this long, and they're all the brightly colored, and mm. they're in a mesh bag. Tube o Kool Aid. Tu tube of tube of Kool Aid. <laughs> yes, um, we're collecting. <laughs> Collecting those uh, for the Harvest Youth Club. They serve underserved children in our community. They run a summer camp, and we're going to be the ones to provide their mm -hmm. popsicles this summer. How awesome is that? So when you're at the store or Walmart or wherever, you know you see those everywhere. Make sure you just grab some to bring in so we can help, uh, help them out and bless them. Uh, we want to thank you so much for your financial faithfulness. Because of you, because of you we're able to... Um, continue to be the church, and we thank you for that. There are always three ways you can give. You can give on our website. You can text 84321, or you simply drop a check in the mail. We wanted to let you know earlier we were talking in our in-person service about if you drive by the building, you might notice that the landscaping's been pulled out in, in front of the building, and it's been pulled out because we are creating an outdoor area, an outdoor area for people to mix and mingle, the community to come with tables and all that. And so if you'd like to uh, make a special offering to that to help us buy all the things that we'll need to make that a reality, you can go on our website and you can go under the building fund. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention that this weekend it's Memorial Day. And on Memorial Day, it's a time where, yes, summer started, and yes, there are cookouts, and yes, school is out. But the day itself is to remember those who sacrificed on our behalf. So we'd like to take a moment of silence this morning, followed by a video to commemorate the sacrifice of those who did so for us. If you would join me in a moment of silence. When I look back through history and consider all the sacrifices in every war and I try to grasp it all, come to grips with it, stand in reverence of all those willing to give their lives for something bigger than themselves, I am stunned by the sheer numbers. All those lives, all those families serving their country, I can't always comprehend it. My heart is not big enough to take it all in. That each one didn't come home. What they lost for their service. What we gained for their courage. Today, I stop to remember. Every single number is one soldier. One sailor who got up in the morning and put on a uniform. One Marine who answered the call to fight for freedom one airman who knew the cost and went anyway, one man or woman who paid the ultimate price for many, and the freedom I live in now. Today, I remember.
I hope as we celebrate Memorial Day tomorrow that we all be mindful of mm. those who gave so that we might be free. Definitely. This morning we continue our series Reset. If you missed the first message, you can go uh, online to our website and you can watch that. Um, you know, we are all in need of a reset. We're coming out of a pandemic. Um, it's never been a better time for us to experience a reset in our lives. Yeah. And over the last year, it's felt like a lot of things are out of control. But in many ways, there are areas of our lives that are out of control, whether there was a pandemic or not. And last week, we talked about how you can choose what we want most or we can choose what we want now. And we talked about how in the midst of, the pan uh, midst of a reset, it's going to require some change. And so our first question, we like to be interactive with you. We'll give you an opportunity to answer is, what's, you know, we think, when we think about change, we always think of change in a negative way. We think of change as, you know, something that frustrates us or something. You know, they even talk about how uh, on New Year's resolutions, anyone ever made a New Year's resolution? And when you make that New Year's resolution, they talk about how by Valentine's Day, 88% of us have, have given that up. So we could talk about how change um, is frustrating to us and how change can mean, you know, failure to us. But uh, we want to think about maybe think about change in a positive light this morning. Yeah. What's one change that you've made in your life that you're proud of? You can answer that in the comments below. Um, Michael, what's a, what's a oh, change you've quitting made? Quitting smoking. Oh, yeah. Quitting 22 smoking. years ago. That's the uh, best change I ever made in my entire life and hard. So any of you that quit smoking... God bless you. Man. It could even be something too. as simple. You go off to college and, mm -hmm. you know, you just embrace all the fun. And the first couple semesters, yeah. you don't study all that hard. And then you kind of say, wait a minute, I need to buckle down. I've got to do something. And we all have changes that we're proud of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. I mean, there's, yeah, like going, finishing college, all that kind of stuff. Doing those kind of things are such great changes. If you've got, uh, Alyssa says, becoming a mom. Oh, yeah. that's, that's a, a change. That's a change. that's a change. No question. She's going to try and Most change definitely. that again, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that if we're going to get a reset, it's going to involve some change. And yeah. last week we talked about the Apostle Paul saying that sometimes we do things we don't want to do instead of doing the things we should do. And this morning we're going to be looking in the book of Corinthians and the Apostle Paul is, is going to tell us how we, can, how we can do this reset, how we can run to win, how we can get past this concept of fearing change, and how we can embrace what we need to do in order to have a reset. So when the Apostle Paul uh, writes to us in 1 Corinthians 9, the Apostle Paul says this, Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets yeah. the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we, followers of Christ, I mean, we don't reset the way the world does. We reset a different way. We do it for an eternal prize. The Apostle Paul tells us, so I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. You know, the Apostle Paul would know a little bit about training. They would know a little bit about competition. Yes, absolutely. You know, in, in our lives, you know, we, we, we compete. You know, I've, I've seen all of you, uh, many, many of you, and I've seen many people that are competitive. I mean, Bye. if you're sitting in a living room with someone right now, can you look at someone and point to them and go, yep, that's you. Michael will kill me over a game of checkers, right? Oh, and no, so I'm going for, I'm going for can, blood. He can make me cry over, over checkers. Checkers okay? is a blood sport. All right, so some people are competitive with board games. Some are competitive with their sports. But what, what if we could be competitive? What if we could outlove one another? What if we could be competitive in our, our faith journey? What if we could compete to be the best servant of Jesus Christ? You know, what's interesting about God is that God did not call us to just be participants in our faith. God called us to be champions. Scripture tells us that too much is given, much is required. You see, we don't say yes to Jesus Christ to be a bunch of losers. Mm -mm. We say yes to Jesus because we, we are called to be victors. We are called to be victorious. We are called to run to win, so to follow Jesus with all we've got. But if we're going to get this reset, we're going to have to move from trying to training. So let's talk about trying a little bit. Um, we have kind of a theology of trying, actually. 
It's, it's this crazy thing where we, well, we're just going to try that, you know. And we've been trying way too long, you know. We, 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 we try to serve or we try to be good, you know, just to try to be a good person when you're following Christ. You know, we try to attend church. We try to study the Bible. We try to be more loving. I'm going to try to be more nice to people. I'm going to try to be more patient in traffic around Madison. I'm going to try not to worry so much, right? I'm going to try to care for myself. I'm just trying the best I can, right? I'm trying the best I can to manage my money, to get out of debt. Uh, to, I'm, trying not, I'm trying the best I can not to have bad thoughts about people. I'm trying not to get angry. I'm trying to spend time with my family or my spouse, right? The problem with trying is you don't really get consistent results just trying. Trying implies this, this kind of minimal commitment, this half-heartedness. And frankly, trying kind of implies a, a plan to fail. I'm, I'm kind of soft-stepping around this idea of, the, of failure. There's, there's really no commitment here. It's a try. It's a hope. It's a wish. I, I'm, I'm bringing a little bit to this, but not too much, right? I mean, even me, when I was a kid, I, I was so insecure about failure. I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even get to the point where I tried. But we need to get comfortable with failure. We need to quit trying to, like, like do all these resolutions at the beginning of the year, you know? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we make a big deal about it. We're going to state this. We're going to put it out on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to do this, right? And, and you know what Jesus would say? He, he, Jesus would just say this. He would, he would say just a simple yes or no, right? Say, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. Jesus would say, if you're going to do something, throw everything you have at it or just don't do it at all. Don't make resolutions you, or, or promises you have no intention of keeping. The evil one loves that because then you're not a trier, you're a failure. And you look uh, like a failure in a couple different ways. You look like a failure to the people you promised you were going to do this, right? But then on the inside, ooh, you feel like a failure, right? And Satan would love to convince you and me that we're failures, we're going to reset our lives. We need to move from trying to training. Yes, you know, when we think about trying, as Michael said, we've got to begin to shift our thinking and think about training. And the definition of training, and in case you're thinking about it, we've all seen people train for different yeah. things. The yeah. definition of training is it's just a wholehearted commitment to achieve a desired result. And as we've seen people train, we know when we, you know when someone's training. When somebody's training, they are all mm -hmm. in. They kind of have a strategy. They, sometimes they'll even show you, you know, a list of what they're doing. They have a vision. If, if we're going to train, it's going to require intentionality. We have to be very intentional. You have to focus, and you have to know your purpose. But what happens when we say, as Michael was saying, I'll try. I'll try. Will you do this? I'll try. I'll try. Now, come on. When we say I'll try, we've got to be honest. Sometimes I'll try is a cop out. Because here's what we know. When we say I'll try, sometimes when things get hard, mm. we're going to quit like that. And when we say I'll try, it's kind of like, it's almost like saying, well, I'll give it a chance. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll give it a chance. Or it's almost, maybe it's like saying when I'll try, it's like saying, uh, you know, it depends on how I feel. You know, feelings can be fickle, and our feelings change, you know, a lot, versus train. And when you hear the word train, the word that you think immediately that goes along with train is commitment. Yeah. There's another version of the scripture that we looked at. We looked at the NLT, and in, let's look at the NIV, verse 25, where it says this. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. And that word training there. That word training, what it means there, it, it's, it, it, the root word of it, it's the root word of the word that we now know as agony. Mm -hmm. I mean, when someone's training and it's agony, you know that they are, you know, as I said, they are all in. It, it reminds me of, you know, they are, they are wholehearted. They're going to do everything they can do to make it happen, much like all the uh, soldiers that we just watched about in that video. You know, they, they went into training. They trained to be there. They were willing to give it all. They were all in. I wonder if any of you ever have ever done a triathlon. Now, when I asked live, we didn't have a whole lot of people that, who had done a triathlon. But here's one thing that I'm pretty sure when it comes to triathlons. You don't sign up for a triathlon <laughs> and say, I'll try. 
You don't just say, I'll try, and then just show up the day of the race, you know. I'll give it a shot. At least I got my t-shirt. You know, in, in Christian, you know, in our Christian journey, you know, maybe we, we you know, what, 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 what's that like if we just say, we'll just try? I mean, I think God expects more of us. Mm-hmm. You know, see, you know, when we train, if we fail, we learn and we don't quit. But when we train, what we do today, we can use tomorrow. And what I love, what I love about this concept of let's quit trying and let's start training. I love it because for me, it feels like the pressure's off. Mm-hmm. There's no pressure anymore in our faith. We don't, we don't, when someone asks us about our faith, we, we can quit squirming in our seats and say, <laughs> say, I'm trying. We can say, I'm training. I'm a work in progress. God's not done with me yet. I'm under construction. You see, I really believe that if we're going to reset our lives, we've got to move from trying to training. Hmm. So what are we training for? That's the real question. You know, and, and once you know that, then you know how to kind of train for it, right? So in your opinion, here's another question for you guys. What has God called you to be? What has God called you to be? That's the question I want you to answer. In your opinion, what has God called you to be? I don't need any scripture or any, you know, you don't need to be trained or anything. Like, what's God saying in your heart you need to become? What, what is God calling you? Listen to what uh, the Apostle Paul says. He says, so I run with purpose in every step. Paul knew exactly who he was. Uh, put the scripture up if you don't mind. I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I'm not just playing around here. I'm not just working out. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. He understood his calling. He understood why he was put there. He understood why God saved him. And so, like, if you're going to understand your calling so that you know how to train, there's a couple questions you need to ask yourself. And the first one is, what has God called me to be? What has God called me to be? I mean, there's specific callings. That's a whole other message. Like, I mean, there's pastors and preachers and teachers and prophets and evangelists, things that like are specifically spiritual in nature and around the church. There is those specific callings. And I'm sure there's healers and things like that. Lawyers, legal people, they work outside of the church. But what has God called me to be? There's that specific calling, but then there's the general calling. And I think this is the mindset that we need to get our heads around, that Each and every person, when they begin to follow Christ, has a calling on their life from that moment on. We need to understand that salvation isn't about saving you from hell. We need that your your eternity is taken care of now. It's not about saving you from hell, but saving you from darkness so that you can go become a light to those that are still in darkness. This isn't some experiment in self-improvement. This is a mission from God. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Married at First Sight. It's a very interesting thing because it's basically arranged marriages in modern day America, right? They bring these two people. It actually is about six, six sets of couples in the last show. They bring them together the first time they see each other is at the altar, right? And so they have two months to work it out. How are they going to be married? How are we going to be? And they were single before this, so it's a big change, right? And so how are they going to be married with each other? And they have two months, and they call it a marriage. It is a marriage. You are married. And if at the end of this, you don't want to be together, you're going to have to go get divorced. You are legally bound bound to each other. And so this is a real marriage that experts set them up for. But there's an Australian version of this show, and it is a completely different game. It's a, the mindset is just complete. I didn't realize they were so divergent from the U.S. in their mindset about marriage and relationships. But in Australia, they don't say the words marriage very often at all. In fact, they call it an experiment. How's the experiment going for you? Do you wish to leave the experiment now, or are you going to stay in the experiment? And they call it an experiment all the way through. And then at the end, yeah, some couples make it, but most of them, they're pretty flippant about their relationships. That's us. Are we going to be married to God? Are we going to be, as the Bible would say, the, 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 the bride of Christ? That's what the church is supposed to be. Are we going to be married to this? Or are we going to just treat it like an experiment? Because when we are married, it's a whole other identity we need to assume. If we want to be the light to the people around us, then we're going to have to look different than the darkness. You need to set yourself on fire for the mission. I need to embrace my spiritual identity with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I need to fall in love with what God's called me to be. So you need to ask yourself, 
what is God calling me to be? And then you need to ask yourself, how do I need to train to get there? How do you need to be a light right now? And it starts in your own home, your work, your neighborhood. Do you need to be a better parent, a better spouse? There's training for those things, believe it or not. Do you need a better communicator, a better listener, a better neighbor? How, you know, how do I need to train to become that? How do I get different than the world around me so that I stand out as God's representative? And, and for us, there is one differentiator only, one that stands out above all other things, and that's love. How do I train to become love to everyone around me? Because in that love, you are going to set yourself on fire so that the people around you see the light of God because you become God to them because God is love. You can train for a lot of things, but you've got to have that love. If we're going to get a reset in our lives, we have to move from trying to training. I love this concept of reset. I think it's so important for us as we come out of a pandemic and as we get ready to go back to normal, mm -hmm. we're resetting how we work. We re we're resetting our relationships. We're resetting even our hobbies. There's probably never been a better time for us to take a look at where we are spiritually. Perhaps we need a spiritual reset is all. And so each and every week at Heritage, we offer next steps. These are steps that you can take to grow in your faith. And this week, our next steps include, I'll begin to pray about God's call on my life. You know, sometimes we know what God's called us to do, and we tend to ignore it. You know, you get that little whisper in your ear, and you know. So what would happen if you could lean into that? What if you could happen if you could, you know, really think about what God has called you to do and ask yourself some questions about what it is and why you haven't activated it? And then maybe you need to create a one-year spiritual training plan. You have one year spiritual training plan in the month of June? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. You know, a lot of times in the pandemic, we were all about survival. We were just trying to make it through. But God doesn't want you to survive. God wants you to thrive. And so maybe we need to step it up and, and develop a training plan, one individualized for us. It's not a one-size-fits-all thing. What, what do you need to, to do the things that, that to do to be able to run to win, like the Apostle Paul mentioned? And then maybe as you're watching this, maybe you haven't started a relationship with Christ and maybe God is, is drawing on your heart. We would love to help you take your next step toward Christ. God wants to be in a relationship with you. You're never too far gone to be in a relationship mm -hmm. with you. God offers you a new life and abundant life and a real life. We'd love to have a conversation with you about that. And then maybe you'd like to be baptized. We can help with that as well. Um. We just want to, as we close today, we want to pray for you, but we just want to remind you that we have a 9 and 10 o'clock in person on Sundays. At 11 o'clock, we'll we're streaming, and so we'll be streaming on Facebook Live and off of our website. You can like Heritage Kids if you have kids at home. Uh, she, uh, Christina, our children's director, has put things up on the Facebook. If you need any prayer requests, you can put them in the chat, or you can just email us. Let us know if you need anything. So let me pray for us as, as we close out today. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this challenge to be wholehearted, to not be lukewarm, but to be on fire for you, to fill our hearts with your love and to become love to those around us, that that's a calling for each and every one of us, and that we can train for that. We can train for the specifics of the calling, but we can train just to be more loving in this world. So God, help us set out that pattern. Help us enter into this training and just quit trying and start doing Help us do this. We know you give us grace. Help us be unafraid of failure, but move forward and learn from each and every one so that we can become light in a very dark world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all have God a bless. great week. Take have care of yourself. Bye-bye. Hang around for some music. <laughs>